hey what's going on so i made a really really cool track my personal opinion of course but i wanted to play it for you and i'm going to give it a breakdown it is drum step i made a full track in ableton for the first time i'm usually an fl studio guy uh i there's there's parts of ableton that i just dislike and there's parts of like fl that are just better and but ableton is a lot more conducive to like a a workflow that i don't know i don't know how to describe it it's it's nice to be able to like have everything in different places and like have it organized automatically it's conducive to that kind of workflow that it's just not that uh that big and a self-directed kind of thing so i'm just gonna play it for you and hopefully you like it because i think this is really neat So that's the track. Now I'm going to walk you through it and uh, hopefully you guys find something useful from it because I 
basically the process here was me finally figuring out how groups work in Ableton. And now I can have effects applied individually to the track, and I can also have effects applied to the group itself, which affects all of the tracks after the... I, it's it's like mixer routing in FL, but it's like it's a it like does it for you if you know what I mean. It's like you can do it in FL. It's just you have to do it in a complicated way. You have to like manually route all of the cables into the different mixer tracks with Ableton. It just sort of like routes everything. So to start off. First thing I did with this track was I was I did the drums. I think that's a good way of doing a track. I started off with just this loop here. And it's break it's broken. I started off with this top loop here, and I made it, uh, I didn't make it, I downloaded it, I sped it up by a lot. Since this is drum step, drum step this is at 174 BPM. This er, loop was originally at 90, so I just sort of spread it, sp I sped it up, quantized it, so it's actually on the beats. And if we zoom in... I've made cuts where I've like added snares and stuff. The problem I have with this beat, this like loop, is that there are parts where the, the hats just sort of stop. So in some of them, see like here, there's no hats. And that kind of thing bugs me. So what I've done is I took it, I took the snare and like added it so it would have more motion. I added the snare again and I also like layered an extra kick with the so what I've done is I have it I just have for this loop I just have it so it's sort of I'm pulling out the uh, top the 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 snare and the uh, hats leaving the rest where it is and I have this plug in here called little radiator which is just a preamp and I have it just slamming the volume and then the drum uh, my drum group has a glue compressor on it and I have this kick drum layered with the the kick drum here sometimes it's layered and sometimes it isn't the side chain in the starting section is just side chained with this kick here it's not side chained with all of it I thought that would be a a good way of having a little bit of variation and then I have this loop which is sped up but not by nearly as actually I think it's slowed down Hold on, what's 174 <laughs> cut in half? Yeah, it's slowed down a little bit. So this is almost like the original. It's sort of, but I quantized it. I, these are loops of real people playing that I got off Splice. So that I, like, I had to quantize them. But this loop I also quite like. Uh, let, me, let me just play that one. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, you get the idea. That that loop is very good. So I just layered that as well. It's sort of sort of a top loop in a way. And then I have this over here. So that's the drums. I started with that. And then what I added was the uh, this bass here. It's a very typical, like, Neuro Reese, you know? Let me open it up in Serum. Uh, bim bomb. So it's misfits and a sine wave, and I'm just shifting them around a little bit. 
with the low pass. And I've got Dimension Expander and a chorus on it. Simple stuff. I have it set to mono with Portamento so it slides. And if you look at the automation, um, I've got I've got volume automation for one of the oscillators, so it's like so you get a sort of like wobbly feel to it. The CPU, because I'm recording, obviously, is having the same issues that it does in FL Studio. It's actually worse in Ableton, the, the, the CPU usage. Uh, and I also just have a, a, a sub bass, which is just a sine wave with a bit of distortion. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just boosting the lows a little bit. So then I added a drone. I wanted to have like a plucky sort of like So I opened up Labs, which is, I think I've said this, but it's like my favorite plugin now. Let me just let me just open this up real quick. So I have this. I have that in one on one side. I think that one's left. Yeah. I have that one going to the left ear, and then I have another sound, which is a, just a synth going to the right. So just these together makes a, but then I have them playing together and they sort of, you have one in one ear, one in the other ear, so it sounds like a cohesive sound. I don't know how to describe it beyond that, but it's like a, a plucky, it's just ding, 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 ding. And I thought that was nice. I've just cut out the lows and boosted the highs, so it's a very bright sound. But apart from like post, it's like, apart from EQ, there's like nothing on it. So I've got this chord, these chords here, S similar thing I've just cut. For the, for the chord bus, I've just cut the, uh, the lows, boosted the highs, brought down the middle a little bit to make room for the lead. Uh, I did that before I made the lead actually. <laughs> But yeah, so I've just got two sounds here. One is a choir and one is a violin. And I'm just sort of like balancing them opposite ways, just like the other thing to make it sound more cohesive. And then I've put, I've ran them both through this preamp little radiator. I've ran them both through fracture and wider for stereo widening. And then I cut the lows, boost the highs, put a compressor on it. And then, yeah, I'm running it through my reverb bus and all of that. And these chords, it's the, a very simple chord progression. It's one, four, one, and then... I, what chord is that? Yeah, that's five, one, four, one, five. It's really... The, the five is inverted. It's really, really simple, but the way I have it made, it's a very bright sound, so it sounds kind of mysterious, and I have it... Uh, I ha the way I have the voice leading, I made it so it sounds like it's leading you on. And that's that's intentional. It doesn't resolve properly back to the one because of the way the voice leading is, because it's not in root position. Uh, and I liked I like that. And then I have those chords doubled on uh, articulated, sort of like a pluck. Let me just open this MIDI clip up. See, it's just every bar instead of every two bars. And it's just... I have uh, a like I've got spiccato violins, and I've got a sound I made in Serum. And again, I have them balanced in opposite directions to make it more cohesive. Put them through the reverb. And here's my lead. So I guess the intro lead I should talk about first because I made it first. <laughs> 
Let me just shrink this a bit. Too small. So I took basic mini. I sort of took a place between a square and a saw. And I did the typical like low pass link to my envelope, which is sort of plucky, but it's like, wuh. It's like a pluck, but with a short attack. So it's. So it's, it's just like a, it's like a wuh. Uh, it's just, you know, some basic stuff. And then I'm running it through delay, bit crusher, uh, a preamp, and a stereo expander. And I'm just using that. I played a melody. I made this melody with the intention of making it, like, super weird. I wanted it to be... Basically, the idea was I wanted it to sound pleasant to listen to, but not be, like, comfortable. If that makes sense. I want it to still like sound good and be within the key, but using weird intervals. And I think I achieved that. Because this track is called Abduction. It's about like aliens trying to eat you. So. So there's big leaps at weird intervals, but it's all it all fits within the key. And even when it doesn't, it like resolves back. Even if it's holding in a uncomfortable note for a weird amount of time, it like always resolves back to a a note within the key, and I think that's I think that makes me awesome. the The main lead is just a serum preset that I made, and it's just you know. Hold on, let me. The main sound is uh, saw. I have it seven voices detuned. And then I have this LFO. It's it's making a, like a sort of vibrato with the fine tuning and uh, bending of the waveform. And the resonance here. And again, I have uh, it's set to mono with portamento, so it slides. I have actually no effects on it in here except for the filter. So that's that I'm and it's just EQ'd with I guess with the mids cut out and the highs boosted again. I'm sp sending it to the uh It's just a, like a little little notchy there in in 3. In, in, at, at around 1k and I'm boosting the high end to make it a brighter sound and I'm just shoving it through the reverb I think this is probably the high the thing that's going hardest through reverb and then I've layered it with a bunch of other sounds all of which are from lab let me let me actually look at these because I forget what some of them are Okay, I've destroyed this, apparently. <laughs> I've destroyed this. Oh, it's a cello. I've destroyed the sound, but it's a sampled cello in labs. <laughs> and I've layered it with a music box, apparently. That one I haven't done much to. I just put it to reverb. And... What about this one? I've layered it with a piano, a music box, and a cello. So, like, it's a co it's a big ol' big ol' sound. And the the main channel, the bus channel for the lead, I have a glue compressor and some EQ. 
Then before I move on to, uh, I guess, the bass drop, I'm going to look at this. I made these, I made this later, the off beats. So, see, I made them for the bass drop, but I'm going to cover it now before I get into the basses. It's, it's another thing where I've just layered a bunch of different sounds. This is the same music box. And it's just playing a, a B minor triad. And I've just doubled it with this serum and uh, another, and another one of the pianos from Labs. Those are my off beats. But apart from that, that's all of the like main sounds. It's just effects now. Uh, Jesus. Oh, onion. Okay. So this build up, what I've done is I got riser. I uh, focused on, I took out all of these drums and just focused on this loop, which was a good idea in my opinion. I added another drum. This actually was originally a loop, but I just cut out one snare consolidated. And I used that with a, a low pass and it's sort of just slowly expanding. Let me just show you. See, that's just like that. With uh, the the main like wubby bass from the from the bass drop, I just I copied it and moved it over here and sort of did an articulated thing and added the kick because I did the build up. I did like a rough build up before I made the drop, but then I like added on to it by adding this uh the wub and the kick drum from the drop to this. So I have this I have this snare build up and I have the kick drum and then the snare like cuts everything off half a measure before the the bass drops. So Once the bass drops, why can't I play the drums? Okay, I don't get it. I've soloed the drums and I can't even play those. What's going on? I don't get it. It's just it's just cymatic drums. Uh. They're sort of like crushed. I've crushed them. I'm slamming compre I've I've got EQ and compression on both kick and snare. I'm just slamming the compressor hard so the drums are like sort of flattened. But I've put a little bit of attack on the compressor so you'd still get the transient, but it's they're like crushed drums. And then I've got these perk loops that I made. Uh, let me scroll solo this. See if I can play this. I'm I'm like, they're never gonna learn my my lessons. Okay, maybe not. I brought in two drum racks, one on the left, one on the right, and one of them is just hi-hats, one of them is like little perks with a, a ride cymbal. And I, they're just they're just on either side. They're both they're both going and then the, this is going to the reverb and the and side chain. So my bases, I think, are the best part of this because I did like a lot of them. <laughs> like, look at how many like instances of serum I have here. So you can't say that it still sounds like Terror Squad because <laughs> it's like more than like three bases. It's oh, Jesus. I guess that explains why it's running so slowly. I have nine instances of serum open. Uh, just for dubstep basses, and I have serum for my lead, and for my all of the 
yeah, I have like 15, 17 serums in this project all running because it's VST2, right? So you can't, doesn't turn off when you have it in the background. <sighs> so, yeah. So here's my, uh, here's my bass, my growl. I got an LFO like this, and I did that basically because it like it makes it a more gradual opening. My bass bus, my dubstep bass bus, which is going to the side chain, has a compressor slammed on it. So even if there's like this uh, the volume automation, all of the basses are basically at the same volume. It just feels like it's getting louder. And all of the stuff is expanding, so that the, it's bending. Uh, the the low pass is doing that. And I have dimension expansion, distortion, phasing, and uh, compression on here. That's just for the growl, and that's being sent through my sidechain bus. It's being sent through the dubstep bass bus, then that's going to the sidechain bus. And then I have this bass here, which is the first, like, wubby, ba like, not growl bass I made. And this is a, I guess it's kind of a stereotypical dubstep bass now, but I think it's kind of a, a cool one. And what that is, I just have Monster 2 on a very, like, it's a very smooth uh, waveform. I guess you could accomplish the same thing with a sine wave and a bit of bending or a bit of distortion. I have, I have that with uh, FM from B, so frequency modulation using the saw wave. I'm not changing the pitch of the saw wave or anything. It's just a default, so it's pretty uh, pretty simple. I've got that running through the filter, which is just a low pass, <clears throat> a, lo a low pass with the you know the notch, and then I've got dimension expansion, comb filter, which is being automated by the LFO. And compression and it's being sent to the reverb my reverb has a my reverb itself has a low cut on it and I also have a low cut on the the channel after the reverb as well and then it's being sent to the side chain so it's not like I'm gonna cause mud for having reverb on it and then I have this is the main wub that I uh, I played earlier that I that I used in the uh, build up. The difference between this one and the build up is just I I put I changed the EQ around a little bit. I cut the lows out. There's no sub in the one in the build up, and the filter sort of opens and closes as it's building up. But that's, this is a really simple bass. FM from B, sync, like, it looks like that. I've got chorus on it. It gives it a bit of space. The, the amount of distortion I have on this, though, makes it, like, Slamming. It feels like you're like slamming something. It's like knocking. I'm running it through Bit Crusher, and I'm running it through uh, preamp, then OTT. So it's basically 
I'm basically slamming the shit out of this. And then I've got another, like, <clears throat> articulating, like, transition growl. It's like a wubby. Just a wub. It's a seven saws detuned with a low pass to go wuh. This is a simple sound, and it's so, so versatile. You can use this for, like, anything. You can use it for, like, a, a drop, but you can also use it, like, as a bass for under your melodies if you just have the low pass slightly lower. Like, if you bring the low pass down more, you have a better... You can also use that to, like... And actually do that later on with a similar bass. And it's just dimension expansion, distortion, and compression. This is just... I have slightly FM, I guess. But I don't have it very much. I'm not overdoing it. So it's like you hear the main sound. So it's not turning into like a screechy metallic thing. And then there's this bass here. <laughs> it's my CPU is dying, but basically I got it's just, it's ooh ya ooh, but I'm just bending it. I'm not changing the wavetable around, I'm just bending it with the same low notch 12 filter, which is like the best filter in, in Serum, except for maybe the comb filters. Uh, dimension expansion, distortion, chorus, and compression. And let's see. This one I like quite a bit. This one has a tendency to do that. I can't figure out why it does that. So I just have it turn off. This one has a tendency to just like sustain and keep doing that. I really, I really like the bass. But yeah, I have it automated so it completely turns off when it's not playing so you don't have to listen to that <laughs> and then the uh, last bass I had in the first drop is uh, this guy which is another like typical it's just a typical like scrape which is uh, saw FM from B with another saw low pass and I've got a comb filter in here, I believe. No, I don't. Okay. I don't have a comb filter in here. I thought I did. Oh, yes, that's right, obviously. Okay. What I've done to get the like the comb filter feeling and the like the the glitchy, like it 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 like stops being the same sound. I've got ring mod. And I've just got it like cutting in. So it goes wow 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 wow. wow. It like <laughs> it like beeps out, and then I, yeah. So I've just got that. Wah 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 wah. Yeah, I can't. I shouldn't sing dubstep. That's terrible. But yeah, for the rest of the drop, it's just it just moves through the rest of those sounds. And I like reorganize them into patterns and like switch between them it makes it sound interesting. And then I go back into the main uh, 
literally all the breakdown is is just the intro, except I just copy and paste the intro, except I took the melody out for, I guess, eight, 16 bars-ish, and I replaced it with uh, this little sample here. It's just a, uh, and this is just like a choir, a soul choir. I got this on Splice. I cut this piece, this note, out of the middle of some soul choir sample, and I tuned it. It's not really in the key that I was looking for, but I sort of just like moved the semitone around until I found one that I thought sounded kind of neat. It, it made an interesting harmony, so I just sort of like wiggled it around. And I just added that in. And then I added the lead back in and switched the main bass to a wobble. I don't think it, it, I think it's like identical, the exact same sound basically. But all I've done is I've taken out the low and I've let the hot, I've taken out, like, I took out the subs and I took out this guy and I put wider on it to make it wider. And that's just on top of the same sub as before, as the, the intro. And that just gives it a bit of variation. I don't know, it makes it feel bigger. And then I left a bar long break before bringing the exact same build up back. What I did actually is I had a build up without the bass and the kicks. And I thought, oh, I'll have a second build up that is even more intense the second time. But then I was like, actually, no, I'll just replace. I just moved the second build up over to the first one. And then I built over to the second drop, which is built on the same bases, except I added in a couple more. I added in a new growl. Monster 2, I'm bending it, and I've just got this, this uh, LFO shape. Uh, dimension expansion, chorus, distortion, compression. And then there's this bass. Where's the sound going? Oh, yep. Yeah. This one I have automated to turn off, too. This one is another one that like leaves a long, like has a problem with the synth. It just sort of like leaves a long tail. Audio was cutting out here. I went over the fact that the tail of the bass was annoying and I used automation to just turn the whole synth off. And then I added in another
It's another typical like growl base. My audio was cutting out again, but I went over the fact that I used a basically a automated a ring modulator to just bring in a higher frequency and make it more interesting than just having a growl as the main bass. And then apart from that, everything is just rearranged from the previous drop, but with these other bases added in. So it's just like different ordering of the same bases in such a way that it sounds completely new. And then it just and then it just cuts off abruptly at the end, and I just let the reverb tail be the uh, the outro, which I find is very effective and it works. So yeah, that's this track. Uh, yeah. So maybe I'll go through my bussing, because for for my sense, uh, people who use FL Studio like me are not. <laughs> used to doing this i pe people who like professionally do music do this all the time so i don't i don't know why i didn't know how to, to do any sort of i didn't well i knew how to do it i just chose not to people in fl studio just like tend to link tracks and then use those one tracks even like like professionals like spag Hetty do this and like don't even like gain stage it's kind of but yeah and i love spag Hetty. this is not me talking shit it's just like you know anyway it's like so I've got compression for both. Uh, I've these compressors are like two different side chains. One of them is a. Uh, one of them is for the like, the the break beat, and that's just the uh, the trap kick that I have going doubled on the break beat. So that's what's the side chain trigger for this one, and this one is just a kick and snare. The this the dubstep bass's bus is sends only meaning that it doesn't go to the master it only goes to the side chain a lot of other like things that go to the reverb I don't do that I just like slightly turn them up to the reverb my reverb is just it's just like a default reverb but on 100% wet with the lows cut out and the highs like ducked down a little bit. And I've, and basically I just turned things up slightly to go into the, the reverb and then that's how I have that going. And some, some sounds are much harder into the reverb than other things, but the way it works is the way the reverb is going, I, if I have it turned up, I get like an interesting tail. And the reverb is going into the side chain, so. Like, let me look at this. Let me, let me, yeah, the reverb is going into the side chain, so it like cuts out and gets rid of the mud. Even though I have it, and I have it turned down a little bit, but yeah. So that's this track. Uh, I'm gonna have a bitch of a time editing this. Thanks for watching, and as always, adios, poopy posts, bing bong. Make make more web steps, and if you got uh, project files, Ableton FL, put them in my my thingy, in the description.